What's up, YouTube? It's Dean Charles Anthony II, back mm -hmm. again here with another video. Uh, this is actually the part two about what's in my camera bag, because I have two different camera bags that I use on a regular basis. One is designed mainly for portraits, but that was the last video that you can see here. Hopefully I remember to link those cards. Uh, the other one is my uh, wedding uh, package video. Uh, what's in my wedding bag, really? And so we're gonna talk about one, what's in my wedding bag and why I put these items into my wedding backpack for when I go shoot weddings. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, before we even start, go ahead and comment right at the bottom. What do you keep in your wedding bag? Uh, I'd love to hear it. Are you a prime or you're a Zoom person? Mm -hmm. For me, I'm kind of mixed. So we'll go ahead and go with that, but um, we'll go ahead and start. All right, so starting off uh, with item number one, which really two items that uh, what's in my wedding bag. So for 2022, I will be shooting mainly with my R5 right here. Let me see if you can see it, boom, boom. Yeah, uh, my Canon R5, um, and I'm also including prior, it was gonna be the only prime in my uh, bag, is the 50 millimeter 1.2. Um, I don't shoot at 1.2 very often at all. Um, it's just kind of like too much blurry black ground for really for me. Um, um, but it's just really sharp at 200 um, at 2.0 uh, which is a great reason to use this lens when you sh shoot um, when you're shooting at 2.8 or 3.2 in that range um, but these are going to be my main also this is currently my only R <laughs> piece of glass so you know it makes sense for me to keep it with uh, with me um, so far I've done a few sh uh, shots with this uh, we're going to do a review video probably pretty soon it's pretty cool this is a pretty cool um, prime lens but um, yeah that's the first thing first two things in my bag I'll I'll be shooting primarily with my R5 and then with this 50 1.2. So number two, we're gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and reach now. We're gonna go with the second body. We're gonna go with the second body. Second body is my Canon R, oh Jesus, not an R. My Canon 1DX Mark III. Uh, this has been my work, her, workhorse land, uh, back, um, workhorse, not lens, it's a whole camera body, uh, for over the last year. I love this camera. Uh, it's very sentimental to me. Uh, I actually, uh, yeah, I just love this uh, beast of a camera. Um, it just does so much so well. Um, this particular piece of gear, I'll probably be using mostly for uh, faster moments it's because it's just so fast um i actually do like the auto focusing a little bit more on this 1dx mark 3 than i do the um, r5 it might be still me just kind of getting used to using the r5 and i'm just so comfortable uh with this and all the buttons and all that jazz uh but it's just it's a very reliable lens i just trust it a whole lot and so when it comes to moments that are very very important i'm going to be using the 1dx mark 3 uh when it comes to taking those portraits taking those family shots taking uh, those running gun shots I'm gonna be using the R5 and going into the next item the thing that's most likely most of the time will be on my 1DX Mark III will be the Tamron you know I should probably stop like talking facing down but you know we're still learning the YouTube world but we're going to be shooting with this Tamron it has the uh, RF adapter on it right now but this is the Tamron 24 to 70 uh 2.8 lens uh this is a great lens I've had it for about two maybe going on three years now um it's very versatile, uh, the great autofocus, even committed for autofocusing with the adapter for the RF lens. Um, it's a great lens to have. That 24 to 70 range covers so much um, room. Uh, I like it more than the 16 to 35, particularly for weddings because the um, 24 to 70 is just wide enough where you can get all the group shots that you'll ever need but it, that 70 uh focal length is just close enough where you can really isolate um uh, the individual isolate the person it's just no oh, just a beautiful lens that's the best way to put it um so i will be keeping my 24 to 70 with me and now we're gonna go to my last lens which is actually my favorite lens all right so my favorite lens is the canon 70 to 200 um to be honest with y'all if i can only shoot with this lens uh, this would be the only lens that i shoot with um i love it for portraits i love it for headshots i love it for capturing just really isolated moments it's a great lens to um to really separate um, not even just the background, but separate the uh, the subject from the crowd around, right? You can really just zoom in and like with the compression with everything. It's just it's just a beautiful lens. Uh, but this 70 to 200 is always in my bag for weddings. Um, honestly, uh, like I said, if I could shoot uh, everything with this, I probably would shoot everything with it. It's just 
and life is not wide enough without me having to back up way too far. But it's just a great lens. Um, it's probably the only lens I trust to really shoot the, the kiss of a wedding, um, to shoot the details of like when someone's putting their hand, uh, putting, excuse me, putting their ring on their hand, uh, those moments like that, and just really capturing like individual shots of the bridesmaids, groomsmen, and of the family. Um, this is the lens to catch somebody crying in, uh, crying on. Um, yeah, you just can't, uh, I can't personally recommend anything else over this 70 to 200, but this will be the third and final lens that I'll be using for my, um, for my, uh, weddings. It's such a beautiful lens. I love this thing. I'm actually really excited to try the RF, uh, one too, but, uh, yeah, it's just be a tough one for me to beat. So jumping to the next thing on my list, uh, we're going to talk about flashes. So I will be using my Godox 8200. 8200 is using with me the battery's charging so it's over there but uh the 8200 uh this is what i use for bounce flash a lot i also have the godox what is that thing called the v1 the godox v1 that i keep in my bag too it's actually from downstairs um I'm not about to go get it, to be honest with y'all. But it's downstairs. But my main bounce flash for weddings it will always be the 8200. I've actually gotten over the last couple of weddings um, kind of the habit of having an assistant actually carry the light for me to help bounce uh, bounce it. it just, it's just a crisper light. Off-camera flash is just so much crisper than on-camera flash. And it just really covers everything that I need, just a little bit more versatile. Um, if it's if it's inconvenient for me to have that assistant, I'll go to my V1, but as much as I can do off-camera flash, I'm gonna be using that Godox 8200 Pro. Um, oh, and the last thing, the trigger. This is the trigger for uh, for this, uh, for my flash. Uh, it's a great trigger. It's the X1 uh, for Godox. I've had this for a, a number of years. It's, it's been a trooper but that's really what's in my camera bag so these are the things that i use um i find that zooms are more my baby than primes uh, even with that 50. um i enjoy shooting with it but i would rather be at that 70 that 70 to 200 length really that 200 length than that 50 most times when i'm shooting and when i'm using the 24 to 70 um that 35 angle to that 24 to 35 is usually that sweet spot for me uh when i'm using it so it just that 50 just kind of it blurs in i want to use it that's really why i'm using it right now but uh, these are really my go-to lens if i can only take two lenses honestly i'll take the 70 to 200 and 24 to 70 hands down um but all three are like really beautiful lenses to use uh they cover all the bases that you could uh, need as a, a wedding photographer so let me know what's in your wedding bag why do you choose the things that you choose for your wedding bag uh, make sure you like subscribe thank you so much for listening to this video Video. Hope you have a great day. This is Dean Charles Anthony II, and this is a quick one. We're out.